and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and of course everybody on YouTube. We got patch 111. It is out. We now know what's going to be happening with patch 111. It will be implemented tomorrow um, about this time. So Wednesday is when it will be implemented, but it just came out. This is, uh, you know, just came out at noon local time where I am at and it is noon 02 right now. So I have not read any of these. I don't know what these changes are going to be yet. Let's go through them together. Very first live reaction. What is going to be the new updates to the Legend of Runeterra format? Looks like um, card updates, champions. Um, well, then it already says followers and spells. So it looks like maybe this is the only champion. But Aurelian Soul did up the round end just a little bit. So now your allies have to have 25 plus total power to be able to level up Aurelian Soul. That changes the really in soul just a little bit, but honestly, not that much. Um, you know, like that that's not changing that card that much. And it says, uh, um, yeah, so you still want the really in soul to be game ending, but not, uh, not changing it too much. This is kind of awkward because actually my camera is kind of like a little bit in the way of like me reading <laughs> that paragraph if I have it right here, but I don't want to go down and, and have a spoiler for the next one. So that's a little awkward right there um uh but anyway let's see how's that going to change anything i honestly don't think that's going to really change anything with aurelian soul i don't think that you i don't really think that changes anything i don't think that you play aurelian soul less because of that level up i think what it does do is it does make aurelian soul just slightly less powerful when you're playing against aurelian soul but i don't think that changes any kind of deck building decisions or really any decisions on a playing the card at all. But um, overall, probably a pretty good change. Um, we, we have seen, whenever I first read that Aurelian Soul level up to be 20 plus power, I was thinking that it was going to be really difficult to get. Like that's, you know, that sounds like a lot. It's, it sounds like, oh wow, if you have Aurelian Soul in play and you have 20 power, like that sounds really tough. So of course that, you know, you should be able to get leveled up by then. You have a a 10 mana champion leveling up but it honestly wasn't that it hasn't been that difficult it's been really easy to ramp it's been very easy to get aurelian soul in play and it's it's really not hard to, because aurelian soul already counts for half of that just to have 10 power for your other units really hasn't been that difficult especially when you add in fury um getting maybe an additional one or two power for you with the fury ability for the dragon so i think this is probably just a good change i just i think that just overall that's that's a, a very good change um yeah so a really insult just as playable as was before didn't change playability whatsoever with this but still just a um a good change so radiant guardian is now going to be four power still has everything else um I think that's that's okay. So let's see. They they have the um, that the the triggered radiant guardian shut down the games, um, and her attack was too much. I don't know. I feel like I feel like radiant guardian was perfectly fine at the five mana spot of being a five five. I thought I thought this card was honestly just fine. Um, there's so much nexus damage running around these days, and honestly, not that much life steal. Um, Nexus healing that I thought that this was a really good card ha as was and it wasn't something the the thing about Radiant Guardian is the competition at the five mana slot in Demacia is so vast there's so many good five mana cards as you can tell with like Remembrance putting them all into play but then even your champions like Garen and then whenever you play another region usually the other regions have good champions also at five mana and so that that I thought that Radiant Guardian being a five five was kind of was what it allowed it to be played i don't think it's un i don't think it's not playable anymore but i don't really agree with this nerf kind of like with the war chef's nerf i just don't really feel like this is a, a necessary nerf um this hurts the card much less than like war chef like nerfing war chefs and shadow assassin down to one one power complete like that hurt those cards a ton this doesn't really hurt that card that much like it it does change radiant guardian but but honestly not that much um, you'll probably play Radiant Guardian a tad bit less, but the decks that are playing Radiant Guardian are probably still going to be playing Radiant Guardian at 4 or 5, so it, it, it doesn't affect the playability too much. But yeah, I think the Radiant Guardian before was fine. I don't really agree with this change, 
but I don't think it's it's not going to change things drastically. You know, it'll be it'll be a slight change, um, kind of thing. Yeah. So like the remembrance on three, you'll never get the life steal with that, basically. Um, uh, yeah. So I. Yeah, I, I guess that's about it. Um, it d does make your your Nexus decks even a little bit better. It makes your like Lux and Remembrance decks a little worse. Um, those kind of those kind of decks makes those a little worse. How you're relying on Radiant Guardian a lot of times to with those kind of decks for for um, stabilizing against aggro, you really relied on Radiant Guardian plus like single combat also to help gain some extra life. Um, th that's all still doable. Radiant Guardian is not unplayable. Uh, yeah, so it's all still doable. A little bit of a nerf. I think unnecessary, but... Oh, well. Inspiring Mentor going... Instead of being a 1-2, will now be a 2-1. I like that change. Now Inspiring Mentor will be playable again. This card, if y'all were playing back in the day, uh, whenever whenever Runeterra first went to open beta, you may remember Inspiring Mentor being all over the place. This was a key... Um, a, a key part of the Elusives decks because it was a, a one man a 1-1 one, one that granted an ally plus one plus one in hand. It was awesome. It was great with Navori Conspirator to pick up and everything like that. I like how it's just focusing on the power instead of the uh, instead like how it's a 2-1 so it can actually attack and block now. 2-1s um, just trade a lot better. I know it can get swept up by Make It Rain but one we see a lot of 2-1s like one mana two ones playable right now. Like that's that's a playable stat line. One mana one two. You really got to be doing some other stuff at one two, um, and just giving something plus one plus zero wasn't really enough. I don't think. Um, so I think I think this is a really good up, up, upgrade. Um, even though it, all it is is just slightly changing, like the power and the health. But I think that's a good upgrade, and uh, I like it. All right, we have picks now turning into an O2 instead of an O1. Harvey, come here. <laughs> That's Harvey. She sounds like she's like dancing around on the carpet. There, there she is. Then we have Pup right here. Um, yeah, so picks is now an O2. I think that changes really nothing. I don't think that that an O2 is really playable either. Uh, I don't think that. Yeah, I don't think this changes anything. I mean. Might as well. Might as well buff it up to two health. I don't know why it can't have one power. I Maybe they're just thinking, like, flavor-wise. Picks just being, like, this small little fairy. They don't want it to actually be able to attack and deal damage. Um, I think I think that's that's kind of what they're thinking, like, flavor here. Um, but I don't I don't think that this... I don't think... Like, I'm I don't, not really planning on ever playing picks. Still at an O2, much less... You know, O1, definitely not. O2, still not planning on it. Um, yeah, I think that picks could be a one-one. Yeah, I think that that would be, that would be better. Um, but zero power, meh. Yeah. All right, Jack the winner goes down to a five-five. I think this is a good change. I did. I've talked about that quite a bit. Whenever it came out, like whenever we first saw it, that sixth point of health is just huge for these five drops. We've seen this uh, a few times now. The the five five for five is just such is like the standard baseline stats. So there's a lot of five fives for five um, around in the format, and anytime the, the that gets where you have a five mana card that can survive and kill other uh, five fives in the format, it turns into something that's really powerful. Um, we saw it with like Vi. Vi had five health, like original Vi had five health, but had the tough, and so it could fight and kill other five mana champions by being a five health with tough. Uh, we see it right now with Trundle with being six health and regenerate. And so like the, the Trundle will go back with their regenerate. We see how that's super powerful. The Jack the Winner was really good though because you would play your five mana five five, you know, your Avaros and Hearthguard or Gangplank or, um, you know, Vladimir or just whatever, you, whatever you're playing, your Garen, um, anything like that, and then they play their Jack the Winner, and it just completely stops down your attack, and it was very powerful. Um, yeah, so I think that, that I think that's a, a good change that I think that it should just trade with other five drops, um, and it's still because this this 
is trades with other five drops, but it also has that upside of creating that sleep with the fishes every single turn that you're generating a spell. I think this is just a, a good change. Yes, it hurts Bilgewater just a little bit because it was a really hard, it's really hard to do that six damage. Um, so yeah, I think this is, this is a, a really good change. Petty Officer back down to being a 3-1. Okay, so this Petty Officer used to be a 3-1. They buffed it up to 3-2, and then it was absolutely amazing. And I think they realized, okay, maybe that's too too powerful. You just see the, the change whenever you have these, these units. The difference between 1 and 2 is vast. And you're, you're seeing this time and time again, um, you know, with Shadow Assassin going down to, to 1 power and with... Um, uh, Warshafts going down to one power. Powder Keg was one pow one health before, um, and it, it didn't really see very much play. Bump it up to two health. Now it survives so many things, and so now it makes it so much better to play. So I think it makes sense to kind of take it back. Um, yeah, I mean, I could see them play. Yeah, they could have made Petty Officer a 2-2 also, but I guess they decided to go with a 3-1, um, which I think is, is perfectly fine. Bilgewater has so much good stuff. Uh, yeah, I think I think this is a two-two would probably be probably be better than a three-one, but I don't think that Petty Officer needs to be as good as it is. Um, yeah, so like the one one health with all the things that do one damage, right? With with all of like your file feast, unspeakable horror, make it rain, twisted fate, red card, all that kind of stuff that does one health makes it worse. Um, that's the thing. There's, there's, uh, there's a ton of cards that do one damage. There, spells wise, there's not that many cards that do two damage. Just immediately, you have to, you have to start spending a lot more mana. And so, big, big difference between one health and uh, two health. Bastion, wow, wow, this, this is quite a buff. Bastion's now giving it plus one, plus one in spell shield. Whoa. So now they're going to give a boost to Targon buff decks because Targon buff decks, I guess, were struggling. I didn't, I didn't realize that, but um, yeah, works better with Taric. Yeah, give it the plus one, plus one, and and the spell shield. Um, wow, that is two, and it's yeah, it's grant an ally plus one, plus one. That does mean it's a permanent buff. That does mean it's not just until end of turn. Grant do, does mean permanent. Um, so a permanent plus one plus one. So how much mana is a permanent plus one plus one worth? You see like Radiant Strike is a temporary plus one plus one at one mana. And I think that's really fairly costed. Um, and you, if you kind of look at like Elixir of Iron is a temporary plus zero plus two for one mana to get that permanent plus zero plus two with the, uh, the Vigor card, you have to spend two mana for the permanent plus zero plus two. So if Radiant Strike is a temporary plus one plus one, you'd figure that a permanent plus one plus one would probably be two mana if you're just kind of looking at like that same um, trajectory of mana. And so basically what they did is they took Bastion, which was a three mana card that is kind of like a, a deny type card. You get your spell shield um, temporarily and stuff. And they basically added a two mana card along on it, thinking that it's not good, you know, that wasn't good enough before. So that's huge. Um, yes, yeah, so that makes that a lot better. And now also the spell shield. So that's just talk about the plus one plus one part, but now the spell shield part spell shield with Bastion was a temporary effect. You know, it was a, it was also a temporary effect and now it's the spell shield is also being granted. And so that now the, the spell shield will be a permanent thing as well. So when it, you can use it very proactively with your Taric, um, or your Lee Sin, if you want just to cast another spell for your Lee Sin um, to be able to turn on your challenger with your Lee Sin, but they're not casting anything to, to hurt it, you can just proactively play your pa your Bastion, give it plus one, plus one challenger, give it the spell shield also, and it will have that spell shield forever. That is huge. This card is now suddenly amazing. This looks like, um, this can definitely be meta warping where uh, we already have Pale Cascade, which is a huge reason to play Targon because of the um, just efficiency of Pale Cascade. And now you have Bastion with this kind of efficiency. Um, 
yeah with diana this is yeah this is great with the diana this this really um changes targon a ton and um yeah i think i think bastion's gonna be just an auto three of in all these kind of uh leeson Tarek uh decks like least you know comma they're leeson or Tarek decks anything that's using targon with any kind of buff spells uh yeah this is this is amazing um this could be something that gets nerfed <laughs> honestly they could this could this could be uh something that doesn't last too long that's a lot you're basically getting yeah you can put it on twisted fate go ahead uh, basically every this is just amazing with every champion now um this makes deny at four mana look really silly <laughs> you just get get the permanent spell shield wow uh okay so that's that's about the, this card so now let's think about it from the other way so now you're now let's say that we have a metagame filled with bastions everywhere and there's a lot of people playing bastions what do you do against that now things that can re remove the spell shield um effectively and efficiently are going to be more valuable so you're looking at cards like unspeakable horror gets a whole lot better because that's something they can just ping a, a something with a bastion and remove the spell shield and also replace itself if you have the nightfall ability so i think that this bastion buff could be a, a huge boon on unspeak on unspeakable horror um, also just other cards that can just do a little bit of damage like parlay does at slow speed but can also be like a good useful card but then it can also like pop a spell shield if you need to later so maybe something like a parlay um if you're looking at uh if you're playing in a noxus deck the i can't think of the name of the spell but just the one mana spell that does one damage with noxus um you know that's something that can just pop a a spell shield if you need to um yeah, Leeson's kind of, yeah, completely unkillable now, basically. Yeah, Blade's Edge. Yeah, Blade's Edge. So maybe now you kind of have to start playing some Blade's Edge or or maybe some more Parlay or, you know, some more Unspeakable Horror, that kind of stuff. Obviously, Make It Rain um, does a really good job of, of blowing up a Bastion. That's something that we're already playing a ton of anyway, but that's something. So, you know, maybe you start looking at, so like, that's why I talk about like Noxus, like, you wouldn't really look at Blade's Edge that much before, but maybe now that you do, maybe now you start looking at some things that can pop Spell Shields uh, you know, like fading memories in your in your uh, Shadow Isles decks, like where you can just have a zero mana fading memories, be able to get rid of one. I'm just saying that's that's something that it could it could come down to as as you start trying to uh, fight the metagame and and uh, everything. So that's just something to be thinking about if Bastion's getting you down. Yeah, I I. I think this is too... Uh, yeah, okay, I guess... So talk about my opinion with this card. I think this is too much. I, I think that they went overboard with this. I th I thought the Bastion was a fine card before. I didn't think that it was really necessary uh, to change. But if you want to grant an ally plus one, plus one also, fine. But granting it plus one, plus one, and also giving it a spell shield, really silly. I mean, just look at, like, Prismatic Barrier. Prismatic Barrier, you just get Barrier for one turn. The difference between... Bastion and Prismatic Barrier is ridiculous, and they're chain they're keeping this at three mana. This seems pretty ridiculous. Um, uh, this makes it, this makes Hush a lot better. By the way, Bast Bastion makes Hush a lot better. I think Hush is going to change. I believe we haven't gotten to that yet, but I think it will change. We'll see that later. If it does, and but just current hush that makes that hush better. All right, cosmic inspiration seven man. If you behold a celestial card, grant to allies everywhere plus two plus two. Yes, get rid of that refill your spell mana. That was completely unnecessary on that card. This card is still just awesome. <laughs> yeah, so the old text ref the old text said refill your spell mana, and yeah, I think they can just completely get rid of that, and that is that is fine. This was this was something that was definitely too good before i think this is a, a just a really good change it's still a card that whenever you're invoking you're probably going to be choosing quite a bit because it's still a really strong card but before whenever you had this and you got to refill your spell mana so it effectively cost four mana at times when you already had your spell mana it was just really silly to have this at four mana um yeah this was just an unnecessary so i think this was just a just an all-out good change here 
Yes, Grandfather Rumel, which we do have a, a Grandfather Rumel uh, donation deck to play or to build. I have a donation to build a Grandfather Rumel deck. I wanted to see if it would change. And it is. So now it is um, an 8 mana 8-4 eight that whenever you play it, you grant two allies plus 0 plus 4 instead of just one ally plus 0 plus 4. So, so the Grandfather gives an extra hug. That's what they're saying. So um, yeah, so doubling that play ability. Cool. So it has Overwhelm, it has Spell Shield, um, big Overwhelm with Spell Shield, so it's difficult to deal with. Um, you know, it's, it's a playable card. It's a playable card. Um, yeah, not... It's not something, you know, it's not something that, you know, it's probably just a meme tier card. I don't think this is something you're going to be seeing in, like, your tournament decks and stuff like that, like your tier 1 decks. But it's it's not it's definitely a more playable card than it was before, and we're going to be playing it soon in a meme tier deck for sure. Alright, hush. So now okay. So there there's the change that we're thinking. So it is going to be the same thing. It's gonna create a fleeting hush that costs one more. So it does it doesn't just make uh four mana hushes, it, it will add on so you're gonna have like a three first hush will cost three second hush will cost four the third hush will cost five so we'll just um add on extra mana to additional hushes so you you still can cut you can still cast three hushes in a turn but that will cost 12 mana to cast three hushes in one turn so two hushes are seven three hushes are 12 i think this is a good change especially if we're expecting more targon with the big, uh, the big buff to, um, uh, to Bastion, that huge buff to Bastion, we're probably expecting more Targon, and therefore, if we got more Targon, then, um, you know, there's going to be more Hush around because more people are playing Targon. So, if you're playing Targon, you're probably playing Hush. So it's probably we're probably going to have a lot of Bastion and Hush fights coming up. And so it looks like Bastion got a big buff. Hush got a little nerf. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So there's new thing. So um, we decided to make another change. So in patch 112, we're going to remove Hush's repeatable aspect entirely and reduce its cost. This change should focus Hush... Uh, on its core intended function and generally reduce its frustration when played against it. Okay, so it's going to be, uh, and then reduce its cost. So it's, so basically Hush is going to be the same cost as Purify. So it's just going to be a two mana card with no fleeting. I think that's, I think that's perfectly good. Um, that, yeah, that's good. Um, so it'll be, yeah, I think, I think that's good. So Hush will be, um, burst, it'll be able to hit champions. So it's basically, it's a purify that can hit champions, but only does it for a round. Um, where purify cannot hit champions, but removes it complete, the silences completely. So like, that's, that's the big difference. That's why it's only a one round is because hitting champions is usually the most important thing to hit. And so Hush will have that ability to hit champions. Okay. Mountain Go. Wow, that's a that's a big buff. See, just a huge difference between one health and two health. Before Mountain Go, not really playable at three one. Now at three two, very very playable. Two mana three two. That's a great stat line, and you can strike and create gems. You know, now we're definitely putting this in our gems decks. Um, they really did buff. I was not really expecting this, but they buffed Targon pretty good here uh, with Bastion and now Mountain Go. You know, Taric decks and gem decks in general, and just ways that we're using gems, definitely buffed up. Um, man, I can't wait to put Bastion on, like, Teemo. <laughs> Get Teemo to be a little bit bigger and have them stop killing my Teemo. That's going to be fun to do. So now we can have, like, our gem assembly deck with Teemo. We can now have Mountain Goat as a good two-drop, because we had no two-drops in that deck. Um, and, yeah, more more Lee Sin, more, more Taric. Uh, yeah, this is this is great in in Taric decks. 
Um, and yeah, also very good in Lee Sin decks because it's, it's a unit that can get you more spells because your Lee Sin deck, you need more spells than this one it can get you that. Um, so good. That could, that's also like if you're playing Demacia Targon, this is a good Demacia 2 drop. Maybe if you don't have War Chefs anymore in just like your support decks, like your Lulu decks, really like this card. This is very good in like if you're playing a Lulu Taric. Also, um, yeah, this is this is just a, a good buff to those kind of decks for sure. Okay, so that's so that's it. So no, nothing to no changes to Noxus at all. So the only changes with with Noxus and Bilgewater are hitting Petty Officer and Jack the Winner, and also making them a little stronger by by nerfing Radiant Guardian. Um, but no changes to like Nexus, straight Nexus damage or Nexus healing too much. The big news I think with this is how Bastion may completely change the game. It really may. That's a, a huge, huge change. Um, okay, uh, let's see what else we got. We got some uh, new guardians. We got Astra, a new guardian. We have a new card back with some Celestials. That looks pretty cool. So we have like this, uh, like the zero mana Celestial, the 2-1 the Challenger, and then you have the one mana one, the, the Taurus, and then the three mana one. I see this is the three mana celestial, right? I think I think so. But yeah, I got some celestials. A soul's not unplayable at all. A soul did it. Aurelian Soul did not change playability one bit. It didn't it did not change the The Aurelian Soul change did not change the playability of Aurelian Soul in the slightest. All right, there's also going to be a minion bundle, which you get a new a new uh, guardian, a blue minion, and you get a blue minion emote. All right, new single single player lab journey to the peak. First ever single player lab, Ballyway. So you're going to either choose Leona or Diana, and then you face three unique increasingly challenging battles against form formidable enemies okay this is really cool like this is just really cool others doing more and more cool lab stuff um and you you do some drafting and everything that's awesome man they're just doing a really good good job with this stuff um now we'll see in-game leaderboards Okay, so you'll just see like the points in um, in Masters. Okay. And then you can also see the leaderboard with your friends. And then some changes to the Expedition Archetypes. All right, uh, let's see. Okay, you can start seeing your match history related features start getting there cool and a couple of issues to fix all right so there we go there's our updates for patch 111 should be really exciting we'll have to see what comes with the the bastion buff what's going to happen with that we'll have to see if anything changes with bilgewater with petty officer nerf um and everything like that so that's uh, pretty exciting. Then we'll have patch 1 at 12 here in just a couple of weeks, and that's whenever we'll see an even more changes and another change uh, to Hush and everything yeah. like that. All right, but anyway, everybody on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. Let me know what you think of those changes. What are you excited to see after these changes? Um, yeah, which ones you like, what you don't like, all that kind of stuff. want to hear from y'all on YouTube. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.